Currently, there's no long-term development plan for women and girls playing rugby. Most women start playing at a later stage, in their late teens and 20s, and come into the game from sporting codes that don't have any kicking element. In the module, we want to share the core elements of kicking and how you can become a great kicker by applying some basic principles. Always warm up before kicking. Because you should use maximum force when kicking, a warm up will prevent unnecessary injuries. You can do a variety of dynamic stretches that will warm up the groin, hip flexors and hip extensors. These are a few examples. Kick with the bridge of your foot and not the toes. The bridge is the hard bony part at the top of your foot. The ball always has a sweet spot. It's around one third of the way up from the base of the ball. Always approach a kick at a slight angle because you want maximum swing in your hip joint. The angle that you kick for touch or at goal is roughly 30 to 40 degrees. This will differ from individual to individual. You should experiment to understand which angle results in the most distance for you and then apply it. You can't kick well without flexibility, balance, strength and power in your legs. Like with most of the core skills, you must master Module 2, 3 and 4. Make sure you develop both your dominant and non-dominant leg. Now I would like to introduce Simone Wilson to demonstrate a good kicking technique. To drop the ball onto the foot, hold it in two hands. If you're kicking with your right foot, place your right hand on the bottom third of the ball on the right-handed side. Use your left hand for stability to help you to guide the ball as you drop it. If you lose control of the ball, you lose control of the kick. Drop the ball towards your kicking foot, straight down onto your foot, not far in front of you. When you kick, you must try to hit the ball with maximum force. However, most of the time the ball will go in the wrong direction because you lose your balance. Which brings us to the importance of your non-kicking foot. If you create a solid base with the non-kicking foot, you will anchor yourself and be able to control the direction of the ball. To help with your stability and balance, during your warm-up, include a dynamic stretch, such as the linear leg swing. Slightly bend the non-kicking foot, make sure you anchor yourself and have good balance and stability. Swing the leg back while keeping the chest up your head in front of you and try to maintain your own balance. If you need to, hold the ball in two hands. Normally I find with beginners they only use their foot when they're kicking. To get power into your kick, you must use the full range of your hip swing. Stand with your feet shoulder width apart. Hold the ball in two hands, ready to drop. Pull back your leg and engage your glutes and hamstrings. Now wind up like a slingshot. When you are ready, release all of this build up 
as you start your kick and move through the ball. Make sure you pull back on your leg as far as possible to get the maximum range. The kick is not an isolated movement. You have to move through the ball in order to generate maximum force. Drive your weight through the ball. Even the smallest kicker can pack a big punch. Walk two to three steps and kick the ball applying all the principles we discussed so far. Imagine the bridge of your foot moving through the sweet spot of the ball. You want to take all the energy you created in the swing and transfer it into the ball. Your foot must remain in contact with the ball as long as possible, following it to the target. Every player wants to watch where the ball is going, but that privilege is for the spectators. This is so important. If you lift your head up during the kick, your entire upper body lifts up and pulls out of the kick. You lose your balance and are back to kicking with just your foot. Keeping your head forward and looking down will keep your chest over the ball and most importantly, it will allow your weight and body to follow the ball towards your target rather than up or sideways. Let your nose guide you. After striking the ball, focus on keeping your head down as if you're pulling your whole body through the ball. Practice as often as you can, but at least three to four times a week. Focus on the basics so that you can improve. Make sure you take breaks or rest in between your sets. If you kick when you're tired, you'll lose your form and create bad habits. To build confidence, you have to believe in yourself. Sometimes it helps to use visualization before you kick. Imagine where you're going to kick to. See the motion. How you're going to kick over the poles or to a target if you're kicking for touch. My last word is that being a kicker is a privilege. You have the opportunity to help your team go forward or score points. Enjoy your duties and work hard at getting better. Always remember the words of the great Dan Carter. Pressure is a privilege. Once you become comfortable walking and kicking, progress to a short run-up to the kick. Make sure you continuously apply all the points to improve your technique. Make sure you kick with both left and right foot towards both left and right touch lines. In time, you'll be able to identify your maximum kicking distance and be able to judge how far to aim when you get a penalty to kick for touch. Remember to practice as often as you can, but at least three to four times a week using these four drills. One of the most important elements of being rugby fit is rest and recovery. Head over to modules 12 A and B where we explain this important part of training as well as share some stretches that will help you in your recovery.